So I fielded this very common question from maybe 10 or 15 patients. And the question is very similar to my own experience being a sick person, a chronically sick person who also took very good care of himself and just did not understand why that was happening. Now, I thought in this video today, I would take some time to answer this question. I take such good care of myself. Why did this happen to me? Hey guys, Dr. Alex Hine, author of the health book, Master of the Day, Chinese Medicine Doctor. Now, before we jump into this video today, there are two very important links. The first right below this video is if you would like to become a patient of mine locally in Los Angeles or virtually in California via telemedicine, there's a link below to contact me in my private practice. The second is if you'd like to download the free guide, Four Daily Rituals That Can Potentially Help You Add Years to Your Life with Chinese Medicine. It's right there down below the video. You'll get that free guide and you'll also get my weekly video newsletter. So let's read through this email from Mika because I hear this quite a lot and I thought it quite a lot in my own healing journey. And I was very discouraged because I saw myself taking such exceptional care of myself and to still be sick when I saw other people neglecting their health and have no problems was very frustrating. So here's what Mika said. She said, Dear Dr. Alex, I was wondering if you could offer your input on a situation that has baffled me for some time now. I feel like I'm the healthiest person I know, at least in terms of my habits, but I always seem to have problems with my skin, my digestion, I get sick easily, and I have trouble sleeping. Everyone around me seems to take terrible care of themselves, and yet they have none of these issues that I have. Why? I thought I would share a bit about my own experience because I am pretty sure in my own healing journey, I echoed word for word what Mika had just asked me. And Mika is even a composite of many dozens of patients, some I had seen as a student and some that I see now. But I share it because I felt it. And I still remember the first time I went to an integrative or alternative health practitioner and I said, you know, I was going for my digestive health. And I said, I'm very frustrated. My friends go out and eat Taco Bell. You know, we were whatever, 21, 22. My friends are going out eating Taco Bell every day. And they don't have problems with bowel movements or their appetite or these other problems. How is it possible that they are eating garbage and they have good regular digestion? And I'm over here being very meticulous about eating healthy. And I'm always complaining about my digestion. And from that, I got a very interesting response. So this first mentor of mine was a Chinese medicine doctor, primarily an acupuncturist, but he gave me some herbs that were very effective for helping my digestion. And they weren't necessarily a super specialized, very specific custom formula. It was a very broad spectrum formula. And he said, because what you have is a hardware problem. And what he meant was that it is my constitution. It is my body that has the problem and not the food. So that's why someone with very good digestion can eat whatever and their digestion will stay generally very good or it'll run through them quicker and then they'll be back to being fine. While someone else eating a specialized healthy diet still has problems on healthy food. So unhealthy food can sometimes be far, far worse. So he said, you have a hardware problem. Now this comes back to the idea of understanding constitution. I was watching this show called The Last Kingdom and in that show, there's a king, I think uh, King Alfred, and he's always sickly in the movie. He's complaining about his gut and he's being sickly. And he said, you know, I hope that my children or my son does not inherit my fragile constitution. Now, throughout history, constitution was a very important and easily observed factor in illness. These days, we just call it genetics. But understanding that your parents had certain genetic predispositions towards illnesses, towards body types, towards the way they carry fat or how much muscle they carry. And in the same way, we have genetic predispositions towards, let's just call it susceptibilities. Now I've talked about this idea of understanding the chink in your armor because it often is the template that then you layer your life on, right? So you have your genetic predisposition and then you have lifestyle and epigenetic factors. And I think that for many of us that take good care of ourselves and are still sick, honestly, just have weak constitutions. And that's not a very reassuring answer, I know, but it's just a fact that some kids come into this world more sickly, some come in more robust, and they have generally good health, good digestion, and if they get sick, it's acute and it's big, but then they get better faster. And other kids are more prone to this chronic, underlying, long-term, months, years of illness, and that's gonna be their constant companion. 
throughout their life to some degree. This idea of weak constitution, I think, can be many things. It is a combination of what Chinese medicine calls prenatal or genetic factors. And then I wonder even what's the effect of pregnant women being on pharmaceuticals. That definitely has some kind of potentially even epigenetic effects. And even I wonder what's happening in the early, um, you know, the early environment and early childhood. I don't know what the effects are of, you know, American food quality versus European food quality. Both the kinds of wheat that we grow and maybe the pesticides that we use and the exposure. I mean, I was reading a paper on amphibians that are becoming uh, transgender or androgynous because of the, <laughs> the birth control that's being urinated out and then into the water supply. So these amphibians that are susceptible and have, I think, very porous skin that are obviously in the water some of their life are actually having these interesting effects on the expression of their sex and their gender. There's a lot environmentally that may be affecting our health and our constitution. But I think, honestly, the big one is that some kids really do have weaker constitutions than others, and they tend to be more sickly for no other reason. And that's just the roll of the dice, sometimes how it goes. So I thought I would share this because I don't know if it's very reassuring, but I do find that with Chinese medicine, especially Chinese formulas, you can repair constitution to the point where someone goes from having migraines daily or gut problems daily to a few times a year. And that is as effective as close to a, quote, cure as you can get. But that will always be their weak point, And that's important to know. So that's all I have for you today. Again, if you'd like to become a patient of mine locally in Los Angeles or throughout California via telemedicine, check the link below this video to contact my private practice. There's also a free guide down below for daily rituals that can possibly help you add years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. All right, you guys, that is all I have for today. Check these related videos out that will help you as well. 